As the title of this video suggests, functions are indeed vectors. I find that for me personally, learning how functions are vectors is one of the most satisfying things I've learned in math. Learning how one area of math relates to another area of math can allow you to use your pre-existing intuition more effectively for something that otherwise would require a lot of time and effort to learn from scratch. For instance, the Fourier transform could be thought of as a standalone mathematical tool, but you could also think of it as applying linear algebra tools to functions, which I'll touch on more later. We could go about proving that functions are vectors by showing that they satisfy certain criteria. However, my goal with this is to appeal more to intuition than provide you with outright proofs. Here's an example of a 2D column vector, which probably looks a lot like one you might have encountered in linear algebra. You could think of it as a point in 2D space or an arrow from the origin. Likewise, you could easily imagine a vector with another component. If we go any further than three dimensions, it becomes hard to visualize. Take the following vector, for instance. It has five components, meaning we would need five dimensions to represent it as a point in space. So let's instead visualize it by plotting the value of each component against the index of each component. Now, you might see where I'm going with this. If we start amping up the number of dimensions, we can end up with something that looks a lot like a plot of a function, and in the limit, it's a sort of vector with an uncountably infinite number of dimensions. This new type of vector still has some of the properties that you might be used to with finite dimensional vectors. You could imagine multiplication with a scalar, addition, and even projecting one function onto another. As you probably know, the way to do a dot product is to multiply the vectors component-wise and sum the result. This is what the general formula for that looks like. For an infinite dimensional vector space, we can still multiply component-wise, but we need a special sum that's designed for dealing with infinities. Often we think of summing up all the components of the product over the entire domain, but our interval doesn't always have to be infinite. This sort of relates back to the Fourier transform we were talking about earlier. Imagine you have a signal that's made up of different frequencies, and you want to figure out how much each frequency contributes to that signal. So essentially what we need to do is build a tool such that for any frequency we can figure out how much it contributes to that signal. This is no easy task, but now, armed with the ability to apply linear algebra knowledge to functions, you can find the similarity of our desired frequency to our signal by taking the dot product. This is called the Fourier sine transform, since all the basis vectors, or basis functions, are odd, any linear combination of these must also be odd, so this family of basis functions only spans the odd function space. We could also do the Fourier cosine transform for even functions. More generally, we can use Euler's formula to combine these two families of basis functions into something that spans the entire function space. Now, I'm glossing over some important details here. For instance, if we want to project a vector onto a basis vector, we need to make sure that basis vector is normalized before taking the dot product. Remember, we do that by finding the length of our non-normalized basis vector and dividing the basis vector by that length. To figure out the length of a vector, we just find the dot product of it with itself and take the square root of the result. We can do the same sort of thing with one of our basis functions. So if you want to transform your function from the time domain to the frequency domain, we now have a change of basis set up that acts on functions and does just that. Hopefully this was a useful video for you. I certainly found that for me, this bit of math understanding was one of the most satisfying and it allowed me to sort of reuse my learning from linear algebra for many other topics like series expansions and differential equations, and of course Fourier transforms. I think it's kind of cool how occasionally you can apply intuition from one area of math to another.